Have you seen the price of Sony G Master lenses lately? I have. The 16 to 35 Mark II 2300, the 24 to 70 Mark II, the same, and the 70 to 200 2800. Now, of course, those are the official prices on Sony's website, and you wouldn't pay that much in regular retail stores. But it got me wondering, why are they so expensive? What's the difference between the standard FE range and the G Master range? And can they possibly be worth the extra cash? I want to take a measured and objective and also statistical approach and just see how the numbers stack up and, you know, because I love me some stats and just see what's what. As ever, I've timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip to the bits you want, no problem at all. I'm also on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers and it would mean the world to me if you could reach down if you haven't already, then hit that subscribe button. It just helps the channel, puts a smile on my face and I appreciate it. I thank you in advance. These videos are also not sponsored, but they are made possible by my Patreon backers. Any funds from Patreon I put back into the channel, I buy gear, I review it, and then I give the gear to my backers. So really, it's win-win, plus it's inexpensive to be a backer. If that's of interest, down below. I'm English, as you may have noticed, but I'm using dollars in this video because, you know, I'm just referring to Sony's uh, main US website, so it's dollars. So to compare the two ranges, we need equivalent focal lengths, and there are a few equivalent ones uh, in the FE range and the G Master range. There's the 35 millimeter, the 50 millimeter, and the 85 millimeter. Firstly, there's the FE 35 millimeter F1.8 and 35 millimeter F1.4 G Master. And unfortunately, DxO Mark haven't tested either at the time of filming, although I can vouch for the F1.8 version as I've used it extensively in the past and I was extremely impressed and I plan to do a review in future. And then there's the 50 millimeter range. They do an FE 1.8, a G Master 1.4, and G Master 1.2. The F1.8 is an astonishing $250 and scored a very respectable 37 points overall on DxO Mark. For context, that's only a couple of points behind the Sony 24 to 70 F2.8 G Master Mark II and actually scores much higher than the Mark I. So the astonishingly low priced 50 millimeter F1.8 costs just one sixth of the price of the G Master F1.4 and one eighth of the G Master 1.2. And that is something. Unfortunately, at the time of filming, the two G Master 50 millimeter lens haven't been tested on DxO Mark, so no luck there. However, I did have luck with the 85 millimeter side of things. The 85 millimeter F1.4 G Master, priced at $1,800, gained an overall score on DxO Mark of 49, very good. But the cheaper F1.8 version at just $600, scored a pretty incredible 46 points overall. So comparing only their DxO Mark scores, the non-G Master is 94% as good as the G Master, whilst costing just one third of the price. And just to say at the time of filming, the new G Master 85 millimeter um, F1.4 Mark II has just been released. And I'm sure, you know, it's not been tested yet, but I'm sure it will improve on all of those scores, plus I believe it's lighter as well, so there's that. But I think for this comparison, the Mark I will do fine because we all know it's still a very good lens. And, um, you know, they, and they were produced around the same time, the F1.8 and 1.4 versions. It is excellent that we can quantify the performance of these lenses with the DxO Mark scores. So next, I want to go into the price versus t-stop or light transmission. I'm not using f-stops because that's a that's a physical measurement of uh, the focal length divided by the uh, diameter of the front element and it's just just no come on we're video guys t-stops. So the 85mm G Master 1.4 has a very good t-stop of 1.5 great light transmission and the cheaper f1.8 version has a t-stop of t1.8 which by the way is exceptional light transmission versus its f-stop. And that means that for T0.3 better light transmission, which is give or take half a stop, it'll cost you $1,200, which is unbelievable. Now to save people from commenting this, DxO Mark scores of course only really account for 
optical quality and image quality. Whereas, you know, it, it, it fails to consider things like build quality, uh, durability, focus speed, weight, and others of which the G Master certainly has the advantage on all of these categories except for weight. These are things that really shouldn't be understated, particularly durability. Uh, all of this goes without saying, of course, but you know, if you're a pro, you're throwing your lenses around, that they might be getting muddy or wet or icy or a million other things. Durability, super important, I know that. So to sum up, the big problem I can see is this. Back in the day when I used to shoot Canon gear, it was pretty clear and widely agreed that Canon's L lenses were a clear cut above their more standard range. It was tangible. You could notice the difference when you use them and see the difference in the results. These days, I don't think that's the case. No respectable lens manufacturer is producing subpar products. They're well built, they use good, if not great, modern optics, and in the results, it's really hard to tell if we're seeing standard or a G Master equivalent or whatever the brand is, especially, I would say, when shooting video. My buddy Tom is a professional photographer. He shoots uh, sports and weddings and portraiture and anything like that and he used one of the aforementioned 85 millimeter lenses to shoot this photo of me. The question is, can you tell which lens he used, the FE standard or G Master? Please let me know in the comments which you think he used and be sure to tell me your reasons. Some people will argue that you get better looking out of focus areas with the G Master range and subjectively, maybe? But you know, as it is subjective, it's kind of from the get-go not a really a valid argument. And the other thing is this, answer me this. How often do you shoot in with your aperture wide open? Most photographers I know tend to prefer to stop their lens down just a little bit because it tends to increase uh, detail a little bit and actually improves things like uh, vignetting which saves them some editing down the line. I'm a video guy and I can tell you that generally speaking for us video guys f1.2 isn't very helpful to us as it obliterates the background which tends to be pretty important context when establishing a narrative. Again, very generally speaking, to gain more subject separation, video guys often tend to kind of prefer to go for a longer focal length, but at, I don't know, T4 or T5.6 or thereabouts. If you're feeling hot under the collar about this subject, um, I understand, you know, it's if you've spent money on something, it's nice to feel like you've made good decisions and haven't been ripped off. But please believe me when I say this is not a dig at Sony G Master lens owners, but more at Sony themselves for setting what I believe to be kind of unreasonable prices. So to answer my questions from the intro, why are G Master lenses so expensive? And I would say mainly it comes down to economies of scale. They're just producing far fewer compared to the standard range and it just makes everything more expensive. Of course, there's a higher standard of build quality. There will be minor differences in focus speed and of course, any other intangible differences. And not forgetting that, you know, Sony can just charge more for them. Are they worth the money? Well, no, I don't think so personally. And that's just because, you know, 94% of the performance for one third of the price. I don't, I don't know. Like I, I couldn't get past that, I don't think. But of course, for many people, it's, it's about, you know, build quality and durability. Second hand G Master lenses, however, that may be the best way to buy them. Anyway, that's all for now. I just hope you found this video interesting and entertaining. That's the key thing, isn't it? What did I miss? Do you agree? I'm sure many of you will not, and that's fine. Definitely let me know in the comments section and I'll, I'll see you down there. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio of which the algorithm has chosen this video for you to watch next. And the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.